quotes from Abu Huraira, who said, and he quotes here, I heard Allah's apostle saying, not sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that quotes, nothing is left of prophetism except al-mubashirat. They asked, what are al-mubashirat? He replied, quotes, the true good dreams that convey glad, glad tidings. Another narration from Abu Zayd al-Khudri, I heard Allah's apostle saying, quotes, a good dream is part of 46 parts of prophetism. His question then is, does this mean that 45 out of the 46 doors of prophethood are now closed and only one out of the 46 doors, that being of al-mubashirat and true dreams remains open? That's his first question. And linked to that, he also wants to know if there's any special significance of the figure 46 with reference to parts of prophethood and what are the natures of the remaining 45. But taking his first question, uh, Yasab, if I could come to you with that. Uh, well, Tariq Saab, this is a hadith which is often presented by our non ahmadi brothers and sisters in order to prove that Hazrat Mizahullah Ahmad cannot be a prophet of God mm -hmm. because the hadith clearly state that Lam yabqa min al nubuwati illa al mubashirat that nothing has remained of prophethood except al mubashirat mm -hmm. and then they go on to say that well look here the holy prophet peace be upon him when the companions asked okay wa mal mubashirat what are mubashirat the holy prophet peace be upon him responded by saying that ar ru'ya as saliha and ar ru'ya as saliha the arabic is often translated to mean true dreams but a, as I will explain uh, later on, that this is a very limited translation of this Arabic word, mm -hmm. ar ru'ya as saliha Yes, it also means true dreams, but it means many other things as well. If we just take this um, narration from a logical perspective, we can tell easily that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, has not closed the door to prophethood. How can we prove that? Well, let's take an example. If I were to say that Lam yabqa min al-ta'ami illa al-khubz, that nothing has remained of food except bread. Mm -hmm. Does this mean that all of the food is finished? No, it means that most of the food is finished, mm -hmm. but the primary element of a meal, which is bread, is still re re it still remains. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was expressing in this uh, statement as well. That yes, there are certain aspects of prophethood which have come to an end, and Ahmadis accept that and believe that. But Arru'ya as Saliha, which is the foundation, the primary root from which prophethood sprouts, that is still present. Therefore, this clearly means that the door to prophethood is open. Mm -hmm. How is it open? That can be understood and elaborated upon, and we can explain and understand that. And that's what needs to be done. Now, as far as Mubashirat are concerned, Tariq Sab, this is also a very fundamental characteristic of prophethood. Because in the Holy Quran, Allah the Almighty states, وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنذِرِينَ That, and we send not the messengers of Allah, but as bearers of glad tidings, i.e. mubashirin, and warners, mundirin. So this verse of the Holy Quran clearly establishes that two of the primary characteristics of prophets of God are, is that they are mubashirin and they are mundirin. They give glad tidings and they warn. So if the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, has said that al-mubashirat are still existent, that means that the fundamental characteristic of prophethood still remains. So a person can be a prophet. But he cannot be a prophet who brings a new law. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the final law-bearing prophet. And after his perfect law of guidance, no new law can come. Ahmadis readily accept this. And we present this before everybody that, look here, we agree with you that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, is the last law-bearing prophet. No new law can come. But this does not mean that another prophet in subservience to that law as a humble servant of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, cannot come. Because in this narration, the Holy, Pro the promise, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has clearly mentioned that the fundamental characteristic of prophethood is still there. And it can be attained by an individual who follows me. Mm -hmm. I was speaking about ar ruya as saliha I, I mentioned in the, er in the beginning of my question that this is often translated to mean just true dreams. Mm -hmm. But we often find that English, the, the hands of English, if you will, are tied when we try to translate Arabic because Arabic is a very vast language. Mm -hmm. If we look at the word 
Ar-Ru'ya. This is from the root word Ra'a. Mm. And the infinitive form of this verb is Ru'ya. And if you look at the Arabic dictionaries, you will see that not only are visions uh, in implied in this word, but also spiritual experiences are also an inference of this word. Mm -hmm. This is why in the Holy Quran, when Allah the Almighty refers to the Isra, the spiritual elevation of the, we believe that, that and the Holy Prophet peace be upon him has mentioned that he went through a spiritual experience known as the Isra, where he traveled to Baytul Maqdas and then in the Miraj he traveled to Allah the Almighty and spoke with him and this is a whole um, subject, even this could become a question, yes. but briefly. Well, I mean, other Muslims obviously think yes. it's literal. They literal. think it's literal. Yeah. But the Holy Quran clearly mentions that this was a spiritual experience of such grandeur that it was far above and beyond a normal dream. Because in the Holy Quran, Allah the Almighty says, Ma kadab al fuadu ma ra'a, that the heart, referring to the Miraj, that the heart did not lie in what it saw. Mm -hmm. Now, does the heart have a physical eye? No, it has a spiritual eye. Mm -hmm. So when the Holy Prophet refers to the Mi'raj as a, something which was seen by the heart of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, this clearly and conclusively establishes the fact that this was a spiritual experience. And in the Holy Quran, Allah the Almighty has used the word ru'ya for that spiritual experience, which also leads us to the natural logical deduction that the word ru'ya can also refer to a spiritual experience. And when these spiritual experiences elevate in their abundance, that is another name for prophethood. And this is exactly what we believe, that the promised Messiah salam, he was not a law-bearing prophet, he did not bring a new law, but Allah the Almighty gave him spiritual experiences, he blessed him with divine communion, and as a result of the abundance of this divine communion, he was blessed with the status of prophethood but a subordinate prophethood, which was in subservience to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. And Tariq Sahib, it's also interesting to note that the prophethood of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also began with ar ruya as saliha as is mentioned in Bukhari Azat Aisha radiallahu anhu states that awalu ma budiya bihi rasulullahi min al wahi ar ruya as saliha that the revelation of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, which came in the form of the Holy Quran, it began with a ru'ya asaliha, i.e. spiritual experiences, visions, dreams, divine communion. Then the Quran was revealed. So when this becomes abundant, then a person becomes a prophet of God, if Allah the Almighty wishes to bestow that upon him. This narration which states that true dreams are a section of the 46 parts of prophethood mm -hmm. also in essence refers to the very same thing that ru'ya as there are many different portions of prophethood mm -hmm. and one of the portions of prophethood is also a ru'ya as mm -hmm. and we believe that since that ru'ya as is still existent today and it is a fundamental character of prophethood a person can attain non-law-bearing prophethood if you permit Tariq Sahib I can end with a very beautiful summary of this in the words of the promised Please. Messiah alayhi salam himself because mm -hmm. his words are more powerful than any of ours of course. Mm -hmm. The promised Messiah alayhi salam states in the elucidation of objectives Tawzi Maram in an Arabic section of his book that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that if the different kinds of prophethood that of the different kinds of prophethood nothing remains except mubashirat mm -hmm. i.e. glad tidings. This is also a translation of ar Saliha. In other words, only one kind of prophethood is left, namely spiritual experiences. For example, true dreams, visions, and revelations of which the elect of God are the recipients and the, accomp and the accompanying light that illumines the dismal hearts of suffering humanity. So these are all of the meanings of ar Saliha. Do consider, my sharp and wise critic, how can you ever conclude from this that the door to all kinds of prophethood is totally closed? On the contrary, this tradition of the Holy Prophet ﷺ proves that the prophethood of the principal kind containing revealed law has of course been terminated. But the prophethood comprising of mubashirat, which are true dreams, visions, revelations, etc., continues and will never come to an end till the day of resurrection and shall never be terminated. Jazakumullah, Ya Sab. Jangir Sab, just briefly on this as well, and surely taking these hadiths, they have to be in the context and put in the context of the Holy Quran, where God has always said that He would bestow 
favours, and it would be an odd thing to do where one of the favours which would be bestowed upon people is the profits if all doors were indeed closed. Exactly, and uh, just uh, adding one final point to the very eloquent answer that uh, Ayaz Sahib has given here, uh, Allah has done that, mm -hmm. and He has been bestowing these favours, and uh, a point which is often raised by the opponents of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is that they also translate ru'ya as just meaning dreams, uh, and they do that so that they can say, uh, which is the second part of their sentence, that therefore all revelation has now been cut off, and there will be no more wahya, there will be no more ilham coming. But the, but the entire history of Islam negates that. We have seen, even from the Khulafa al-Rashidin, examples of what can only be termed ru'ya because the Prophet Muhammad sallam, said nothing remains except ru'ya. So whatever comes is under the category of ru'ya. Mm -hmm. We see for example in the case of uh, Sayyidina Umar anhu, the second caliph that he was uh, when the day when he was m uh, pronouncing a sermon and uh, there was a, a, a contingent of the uh, co uh, of the army which was uh, the Muslim army which was, uh, was in battle somewhere very remote from where he was and uh, they were about to suffer a, a, a crushing defeat. He saw this in a vision and he told them, go to the mountain, go to the mountain. And they heard him mm -hmm. where they were. And so they all took refuge on the mountain and then the tides were turned and, and in their favor. Now what they experienced here can only be termed as a ru'ya. Mm -hmm. But we can see that it's not a dream. Mm -hmm. It's well beyond that. Mm -hmm. So that's one kind of experience. But then we have the lives of all the saints, you know, the Abdal, the Aqtab and Awliya of, of uh, Islam, whose lives are replete with revelations coming to them, visions while they're awake, etc., and dr true dreams. So all these things clearly come under the definition, as Ayah Sahib has said, of a ru'ya, which is the thing you see. So th it's a spiritual experience, and th this is why nobody could say that based on this hadith, or th there were several versions of it, but on this hadith that no revelations can come, that would be totally inappropriate to say so. Jazakallah, Yassab, for your very details and thoughtful answers there as well.